Here's to new beginnings. Willow! Hey friends and frenemies, welcome back to the channel. Once a month I do a book haul video that shows all the books I've gotten over the course of the month. These are usually the books that are not time sensitive or limited really in any certain way or out of print and then I scored them on eBay or through other means but because this isn't the world's first look at them I don't rush through an unboxing to share them with you right away. So they fall to the category of a book haul video. I also run out to bookstores and detail those trips and today I have one of those as well. So this is the June book haul video. Get, relax, get comfy, get cozy, put on something comfy. Comfy and or snazzy, depending on your mood as it were. But first things first, I'm going to check in with the Magic Duff Bucket to get some word loosener going on in the old Jeff hole. What have you got for me today, Magic Duff Bucket? You could, it says Duff Bucket, but you could see the magic. You have the Marriage Circle by Rapture Brewing. It's their Marzen, which is a um, Oktoberfest beer from Bavaria. So this is uh, the Rap Rapture Brewing Oktoberfest lager. So I'm I'm eager to try it. Uh, I trust Rapture implicitly. This is the same as I said in previous uh, videos. Uh, the same trust I have with Paul Suntup, he may publish a book outside of my comfort zone or my genre pool or my author stable, but I'll follow him and I'll read it and I'll give it a chance and usually I love it. So same thing with Mitch over there at Rapture Brewing. It is a um, 5.6 ABV, so feel free to have two. And then, um, and still operate a camera and a YouTube channel. <laughs> if you saw my last live stream, that uh, Jeff Ward Stout was uh, hitting pretty heavy. Bam! Kind of took took old Jeff out. That's good. That's good stuff. This is very light and refreshing. I could see drinking this in the middle of the day and, and having no shame whatsoever about day drinking. Oh, this is really good. Very good. And again, not my usual bag. I'm a stout, very dark. I mean, this is a dark, this is an amber lager. Um, but usually I go much darker, heavier. Um, like my fiction, but this there's a mood for this. There is a mood for this. And this will give you a mood. And that mood will be happy. Woohoo! Oh, about now is a good time to plug in the microphone. So I have a lot of books to share with you and some and some things that go along with the books we all love. But before I get to those, take a trip with me to my first outing as a resident of Tennessee, as a homeowner, you know, legal voter here in Tennessee, I took myself, myself, parts of myself, some I left in other places, but uh, most of me and my son went to uh, Second and Charles. And, well, <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything, so check it out. I'll show you what I got from there. So as promised, this is my first book haul in Tennessee. Let's see what Second and Charles has for us today and for us i mean me and my son but he's not going to be on the camera he doesn't want to be and also you us is us the royal us the, the royal we
from there because you know what? I really don't like Second and Charles. I've decided I'm not going to give them a third try. I gave them two tries. I, I tried them out once in Indiana, and now this is my second attempt. They gave me the same vibe in both both places. They feel more like a Barnes & Noble than a secondhand bookstore. Definitely nothing like McKay's or even half-price books or thrift stores. If you go to a thrift shop or a McKay's, you kind of feel like you're rummaging. You could find that treasure hidden in the stack somewhere. At, uh, at Second and Charles, it feels very sanitized. Everything's much more expensive. And they always try to upsell you on magazine subscriptions and put in this code and you get this. I don't like those gimmicks. I just want straight up treasure find book stuff. Uh, not, not what Second and Charles is pushing out there. So I, I think I'm cooling it on them. I guess if I am desperate for, a new, for uh, another look at another location and I happen to be near one, I'll give it another try. But for now, I've done it. Check the box. Can rule them out. Uh, unfortunately, there are no half price books near my new locale. And McKay's is kind of a distance from my, my new home. So I'll have to figure it out. I'm still looking for other options. I'm still researching. I'm just here, you know. I just got here like a minute ago. It's my first day. <laughs> I just got, it's my first day on the job. Can't fire me. <clears throat> so what did I get then? What do I have to show you? Because come on, Goober. You know, you went, it's a total bust at Second and Charles. Oh, the stuff I got today to share with you. Um, if you're a watcher of my uh, live streams, if you attend those, you've probably seen a few of these things, which is fine, which is fine. Not everybody can be at my lives, um, but you should. It's a lot of fun. Um, first thing I want to show you is, uh, I don't know if you remember uh, a book a little while ago. It was kind of a, I hardly ever talked about it. It's called Butcher Boy. Well, Suntuck did it. I got the lettered. I got the artist editions. You've seen those unboxings maybe. Well, I just got my David Lupton Remark. It is not a remark in the traditional sense or accurate sense of the word. A remark is when the illustrator artist puts the art directly in a, a finished book and they draw it right on the page. It's an original piece straight from the artist to the page and delivered to the reader, collector, fanboy. Well. David Lupton did not feel comfortable uh, marking up people's books, but he did agree to do it on uh, thick stock archival quality paper, acid-free paper, that you could then tip into the book if you were of a mind to do so. And um, when, when he said he'd be open to doing it, I immediately emailed him, requested... Uh, something that he mentioned in our interview. When I interviewed him, he talked about how he had a vision for the last image in Butcher Boy. Uh, and, and when he submitted it to Suntup, they, didn't, they said, no, nah, we want something a little different for that final scene. So he gave them something different. It's a very spoilery image. I cannot show it to you. It's not on the Suntup website. To see that image, you're going to have to get the book yourself. Um, or have someone else show you, I guess. I mean, <clears throat> because it gives away uh, a very, in, uh, very important scene. So, but this was his first, uh, his first attempt at that, and he recreated it for me, uh, and I, I am just blown away by it. Love it to death. It's an original piece. I am too chicken shit to tip it into the book. I'm not going to glue it or I'm even afraid to just place it in the book because I don't want, I, I want to get a, a, a sheet of vellum to at least cover the, the image so that nothing gets rubbed off or transfers to the book because I would want to keep it with the lettered. Yeah, not gonna pass up an opportunity to show you my lettered. Hey, butcher boy. You know, in this clamshell case. And um, so you could see, here's the book. And the image would fit pretty nicely inside. 
but I, I can't I just can't do it so it's it's going to be framed or I don't know I don't know it's TBD but I'm gonna have fun Dean at determining uh, what to do with the image up next in my pile is something that is a Amazon find it's it's a book that's been in print for a long time and easily accessible and I just got a paperback but it was recommended to me by Chad Lutsky and that's The Painted Bird. I know nothing about it um, even though I'm sure he's given me a sort of abstract about the book. Uh, I don't remember it but because it came from Chad Lutsky and I dig his style of writing so much I jumped on the recommendation and got a copy off of Amazon. So The Painted Bird by Jersey Kaczynski uh, apparently it's kind of controversial, so I don't know why. I don't know why. I, I give you a synopsis of the story, but I don't have one. <laughs> the Painted Bird. But I, you should, when, when I make these recommendations and when I show you these books, um, you should know that, you should know the pool I swim in. So this is one of the fish in that pool. And it's a fish that's a Painted Bird. It's not confusing. Up next is a chapbook by one Paul Michael Kane. I had no idea he was going to write anything. So when he did, I jumped all over it. Well, maybe not the fastest, I'm sure. As soon as I realized he had a chapbook that he authored and, and designed, uh, I, I jumped on it as soon as I realized, and I ordered it. I haven't read it yet, even though it's a chapbook, but... Busy guy, got to do a lot of things. And if you don't know who Paul Michael Caine is, he is the genius, creative genius, and all around incredibly kind guy behind 19th edition. I'd say he's like the Mr. Rogers of small press publishing in the, in the community we're in. He's such a nice guy, such a great guy. Uh, all the support you should give him. He sent a couple of bonus things my way. This 19th edition bookmark. <laughs> That's Paul Michael Caine in the electric chair. Love it. Love the 19 there. Um, and uh, All Hail the Crimson King sticker. And if you don't know what that is, then uh, obviously you're not a golfer. So, oh, and also on the back of this bookmark is a constant reader checklist with all the Stephen King books. So it's beautiful and useful and functional. So, and of course, um, it is signed, The Forgiven is signed by Paul Michael King. So, very, very happy to get that. Up next is an example of why moving can be difficult when you are a book collector and you have tons of pre-orders. I pre-ordered Insomnia, the signed edition from VJ Books, Sarah Pimborough, is the author of that magnificent read. And when that pre-order was going to start shipping, I reached out to VJ Books and I said, hey, I moved, here's my new address. And, and the guy there, the customer service guy said, oh great, okay, I'll update it, I'll make a note. Here, I'll put your new address in and your book will get to you. We haven't shipped it yet. Well, the next day or two days later, it shipped to the wrong address. So they had to send me a replacement book. I had to send them that other book back. And so it was kind of annoying, but um, I understood, you know, you can't catch them all and they made it right. They sent me a replacement copy and here it is. It is, of course, signed. I mean, that's... That's why I would go to VJ Books. VJ Books is the place to go for all of your um, signed trade edition needs. If you just want a trade edition signed, uh, very affordable. They wrap them in mylar. The only thing they do that's kind of annoying is they throw that little sticker over the artist uh, flap there. VJ Books. So what? I Whatever. They did the mylar for me. I'm really bad with doing it. So... Oh, it's got a Joe Hill blurb on there. Very cool. This is a great read. I read the arc. I interviewed Sarah Pimborough for the release of Insomnia and uh, published it the day it was released. So, um, published the video the day the book was released. I know that might have sounded confusing, but uh, Sarah Pimborough is incredible. She talked a lot about this book, about Behind Her Eyes, 
about Netflix, the Netflix uh, movie based on that book, all kinds of stuff. So check out that interview if you haven't. Read, you know, you don't check out that interview. You must read Sarah Pimborough, one of my go-to must-read authors when she comes out with stuff. And I didn't even realize the back catalog I have to catch up on with her. That I will. I will do with the quickness. But uh, also, if you do move, I, I reach out to all your uh, all the people holding your pre-orders. I do have one more uh, VJ Books pre-order there that they, I had to straighten them out on, and that's A Child Alone with Strangers. I'm getting that from uh, VJ. That's the Philip Fricasse book. And speaking of Philip Fricasse, when I came back, I, I had to go back to Chicagoland area to get my house ready f to put on the market. and It's already on the market. And when I came back, Philip Fricasse told me he's going to send me a housewarming gift. Um, I shared this with my live stream audience uh if you were on it then you saw it um, but i want to share it with you here this is a hardcover of alter with an amazing personalized note from philip fricasse that's like this is like this is like a a bump of cocaine really is what it's like because it's amazing it's a mood altering piece of paper and um he hooked me up with this, the limited deluxe hardcover edition, and this is letter W. Copy W of Z, <laughs> of Wizard of Oz. I don't know. So uh, I haven't read it yet. I'm dying to read it. This is just uh, this. This was amazing. I think Philip Fricasse always does great stuff. With his books, uh, there's always great artwork. They're always very well done. This has Francois Villancourt art. He, he's a great author. I'm reading Don't Let Them Get You Down Right Now. I'm going to do a review of that soon. Um, but when he does the books, when he publishes the artifact, the actual book, he thinks like a collector does because he is a collector. Amazing guy. I'm going to have him on a Zoom call soon um, to talk about everything he's got going on. I think he works harder than Ryan Seacrest. Right, that's that. It's uh, the guy, the top forty guy, the American Idol guy. He works hard. He's like the hardest working man in Hollywood. Philip Fricasse, I think, has him beat. Up next is another Philip Fricasse book. Well, it's a book I got because Philip Fricasse's in it. It's Thirteen Haunted Houses, and not only is it another Fricasse book. It's another example of why moving sucks when you have pre-orders out there because this is a book that fell through the gaps. I didn't even get to it in time and it uh, had already shipped. And, it, and, and so I reached out to the publisher. I said, hey, you know, he goes, hey, it shipped. It got to your house already. But they forwarded it and I got it. So I got lucky there. But also Joe Mori at Weird House Press was working to replace it. He already sent a replacement copy to me in the mail. So great guy, great customer service. He stepped up when he didn't even need to because um, it clearly wasn't his fault that he had the wrong address. It was a pre-order and I'd totally forgotten about it. So that caused me to go through all my pre-orders and look at what was out there that wasn't a standing order with a publisher I have a relationship with that I've updated that contact information. There are a number of places where it's just like a one-off. That's my only order from that publisher that I've never ordered from before so they don't have any idea who I am and no customer relationship with me and there's a there's another book coming called Swedish Cult from Valencourt and I believe that has a Fricasse story in it that I had to update so go through your list if you ever move and and notify just bother the hell out of them better to bother them and get it right than to have a book just totally lost in the mail and rounding out my book haul are two entries from Cemetery Dance. Oh my gosh, I know, that's crazy, right? Cemetery Dance, are they still publishing? So the first thing was, uh, they got a new guy there, a new warehouse guy, uh, who's also like a Brian James Freeman guy. It's Dan Franklin. He's also an author. So, so there's that. There's a lot of reason for this guy to be affiliated with Cemetery Dance. And he stepped up to the plate. God bless him. He's like uh, he's like Biden's press secretary, just coming out there to answer all the questions about what's going on in the world. And um, 
he got up there and he said, hey, if anybody's looking for uh, rare out of print items, hit me up, message me. And uh, I'm gonna be strolling through the warehouse, kicking up, looking in boxes, peeking under rocks, looking behind shelves uh, for those rare items that have been gone for a long time. So I reached out and I said, hey, do you got any damnation game slip cases? And he goes, no, I think we're all out of those. Sorry, bud. Um, and then like 10 minutes later, he, he emails me back. He goes, I just found a box with damnation game in it. Uh, and, and there's some slip cases. You, you still want one? I go, yes, I definitely would. Now I don't want damna the damnation game slip case for the damnation game. I already have one of those. It's right here. This is the first Clive Barker book I've read. It's brilliant. And um, it comes with this blank slip case. There's no name or anything, no stamping. And the, and the book itself is, is kind of understated, but beautiful. It's got the Clive Barker signature, so it's, it's amazing. No, I didn't, I didn't want a spare for Damnation Game. What I wanted was a slip case for my Weave World, my Earthling Press earthling publications edition of weave world now this is the gift edition it's not signed unfortunately i i missed that by years i didn't even know earthling was a press when they first did weave world so i missed out entirely on that but uh paul miller sent out an email about maybe a couple years ago saying hey i found some uh out of print titles anybody interested and i jumped on the weave world well Shocked as I am, it fits beautifully in the Damnation Game slipcase. It's remarkable. It, it could have totally been built for this book. And, and uh, uh, Weave World is a longer book, a bigger title. Um, so it's amazing that it fits the same, um, that this one slipcase fits both editions so perfectly. And they're both Clive Barker. I mean, how could I have passed on that, really? So lastly, I need to get the Dragon Lord in off the shelf for this. This is Gwendy's Magic Feather by um, Richard Chismar and Cemetery Dance. Now, this book was stalled out. It was like hanging out somewhere for a long time. Um, and I'm not just talking about the years-long pre-order wait I had. I, I bought the book. This book is three years old. This is a three-year-old book. The, the new book is already out. Gwendy's Final Task. The trilogy's been done. I've only read Button Box. And I've been waiting forever for The Magic Feather to come out. And um, in the meantime, they've published every other book that Chismar ever wrote. So... Um, I, I will be selling this one, no doubt. I already sold Button Box. So, um, but even after it shipped, it was just like uh, icing on the cake to make me wait a long time. And then when it shows up, it looks like it's been stopped. So let's see what it looks like inside. Wendy's Magic Feather by Richard Chismar. So, uh, case feels okay. It it it, it feels it feels solid. Um, pretty good. And then the artwork. So this has the the different dust jacket so like altar it has francois villancourt artwork the naked book wendy's magic feather and then uh, uh some stamping i believe she runs for office in this book it's elected somewhere somehow and uh a lot of the reviews on this book are middling the interior art is Keith Minion. Now, I don't know if that's just limited to the coin or if there's other artwork in here. Um, <laughs> I, I just roll my eyes. Look at, 
Look at these generous margins. It's 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 like a kid writing a paper in high school trying to stretch a three page double space essay into a 10 page uh, final. I, I don't know. Um, like I said, I, I've been soured on it since the wait was so long. Okay, so here's some more of that interior artwork. So Francois only did the cover and uh, Keith Minion did the interior artwork. It is again signed by the Chiz, the Chiz himself. Um, and yeah, that's that's really that. I wish I was more excited for it. Um, but you know, that flame dies after a while. That flame, that enthusiasm just dies. It just dies, it, it sputters. You try to get the ember going. Maybe it'll catch back up, but um, I don't know. Gwenny's Magic Feather. <laughs> GMF. GMF. mf -er. I don't know what these are going for. But anyway, that's it. That's my book haul, my first Tennessee book haul. I hope you loved it. I loved it. I thought these were some great finds. So I'm so jazzed about a bunch of them. You know, even the ones I read that, that signed Insomnia, that was, wasn't that fun? 13 Haunted Houses I'm geeked about. Um, the only author I recognize in that is Philip Ficasi. So that excites me. You see, you see other authors. You get to taste it. You get to sample. You get to rub some on your gums. You know, see if it's the real deal. And also that Painted Bird. I mean, uh, a book that's that important to Chad Lutsky is a must read for me. So that's it. If you're, if you're in or around Tennessee, um, near the Chattanooga area, hit me in the comments below about any uh, half-priced... <laughs> Any used bookstores you know of that I should check out and I'll, I'll put them on the list because I would definitely like to never go back to second and Charles when, when you get up to the cash register and you're buying your stuff you're paying for your stuff and they sent they give you 13 codes to put in and surveys to fill out and circle here if you want to subscribe to these three magazines you're like come on is this an MLM because I feel like it's an MLM. I feel like I'm gonna be expected to recruit five people in the parking lot to come in here to subscribe to random magazines and stuff. It's just, it's just annoying. Just, I came here for the books, man, and you're, and you're trying to sell me on all this other garbage. So, um, just let me know. Chattanooga area, any used bookstores, and, um, and I'll go to check them out. And I'll, I'll give you a shout. The shouts out. <laughs> but until then, until that happens, my next book haul will be July, of course. And uh, and then I'll, I'll do other things between now and then. But uh, no matter what, have a book, have a beer, and stay frosty.